Welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be talking all about the breed Shepanese. Shepanese can be a combination of a Pyrenees with any shepherd, but in this case with Farty and the, all the Shepanese that I've met, they are German Shepherd and Pyrenees. I would assume you would call it the same thing if it has an Italian Shepherd or any other type of Shepherd mixed, mixed with the Pyrenees. So we're going to talk all about how the Shepherd ends up combining with the Pyrenees and what traits you can expect. So if you're excited to see what you can expect from your new puppy, then keep on watching. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the cons for anybody who just wants to know the negatives right away and get it out of the way in case it's a no-go for you. So first one is let me just rub your back for one second. I'm going to give her a little rubby rub. This is what you get to look forward to with any type of Pyrenees combination. They just shed like crazy, which is okay. I mean, don't get an iRobot. Don't get no Roomba. That shit ain't going to work for you. You're going to have to hand, walk, hand clean it. There's no way around and don't have a carpet because carpet is really horrendous to clean and your vacuum will hate you. So hardwood all the way. But yeah, shedding is going to be a thing. Um, a lot of people like to keep their dogs outside for a good part of the day. That helps. Um, and they don't mind, they've got plenty of fur, so they're not cold, don't worry about that. And, and during the winter, summer, there's a lot less shedding going on because they get it all out of their system in the spring and then you get to enjoy them in the summer with a lot less hair. The other thing that some people may consider a con of this breed is their neediness. As you just saw, she went to, look, like, they're just, they're needy. They love attention, they long for you to approve of them. So they will follow you around the house and they do, need a lot of instruction. They're not the type of dog where they're just going to go do their own thing. They want you to tell them what you'd expect from them and what you'd like them to do. I find that to be a pro, but I know for some people, if you want a low maintenance dog, I wouldn't say that they're a low maintenance breed. They do need training and positive enforcement and all of that fun stuff. Now the fun part, let's get into the pros. First one being, look at this gentle giant. I mean, she's huge. She's a, she's about a hundred pounds and she is all sweetness, super kind, super caring. And huge. Do you need to get up? Are you a little bit stiff? You can get up if you need to. Yeah. Um, so very gentle, very sweet. Great if you want to have a kid or if you have a cat or anything like that. She does great with our cat. Cats. Uh, <laughs> and also with chickens. Um, another thing I'll say about this breed, if you are thinking you want to make it a livestock dog, it's same thing um, that I was saying with the cons. You just need to make sure that you train your dog for whatever you want. So if you want them to be around chickens, put them around chickens with a tether on so they can get used to it. Have them spend time with the chickens supervised before you just send them on their way to protect the chickens for you. But they can absolutely do that happily. <laughs> and no problem there. You just have to ask for what you want. So heart over here and all Japanese. I have some other Shepanese next door that I have clips of I'll play over, but they're a highly intelligent breed. They um, become low-key uh, imprinted on their owner and or whoever spends the most time with them or multiple people. I would say a whole family is definitely not out of their repertoire. So they will want to follow you around and they also look to you for, I've kind of repeated all of this, but when you see it in person, you'll understand what I'm saying. Um, but they just follow, they find their owner and then they're pretty good about listening to their owner. So uh, typically if you were to take this breed off their collar on a hike or off their leash, they're going to run right out past you, probably to about 10 to 12 feet out. The reason that they do that is because they're trying to protect you and they want to sniff out and make sure there's no like coyote or mountain lion sn smells within range of you. Because if so, they're going to be worried or be protecting you. Um, so that's something you can look forward to slash be aware of. Don't freak out if your dog, if you let them off and all of a sudden they run out, just give them a second and watch them because they'll probably stop and then look to you. And then you tell them good dog when they look at you because that means they're checking in to make sure that what they're doing is what you want them to be doing. The nice part about this breed is they have the German in them, so, or the shepherd, and they're very obedient. They would run off and they'll just be off on the property for like a few hours when we lived up in, when I lived up in Cobb. Mm-hmm had five acres so it's like you wouldn't see them for like two hours and then they come back and it's like they're fine they're just like checking their area just check it on the cows um, like, the, hmm. con the pros is she's lovable she listens really well for the most part <laughs> when she's not distracted with um her brother or Benny. Yeah. All right. So now that she's pretty far away from us, let's Rain. see if when he gives her a call, she'll come. Rain. 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 What a good girl. That's such a smart dog. What's nice is when I'm like working around the field. Good and she's girl. Like, 
um, she'll come and check on me and then hang out like real close. So they're very smart. They do listen well. They will look for you. They're very good off the leash as long as you trust them and make sure you're using your communication as a leash with them. So they know what you expect and how far they can go out without getting in trouble. They're a very versatile breed. You could use them for a number of things. They could be a house dog and take care of your kid and obviously change their diaper and shit, but like keep an eye on them, make sure they're safe. And you could also use them to take care of your livestock. They're great just guard dogs like a German Shepherd would be. They're extremely scary. One thing I'll also recommend is that you get them socialized from a young age if you plan to have them around a lot of people because they do tend to have that Pyrenees antisocialness where if you were during COVID and didn't take your dog out much, you'll find that then when they do meet people, they're very fluffed up and protective of everyone because they're not used to seeing people and when they do, it's something to be alerted about like the mailman. So you'll wanna train them to um, be used to other people and letting random people pet on them and being okay with that. Great place to go is Home Depot. Just go walk your dog around in Home Depot, let the random workers give them some treats and teach them that people are fun, not bad. Okay, so now I want to address wandering because as you guys know from our numerous videos about our Pyrenees Bentley, wandering is definitely in a Pyre Pyrenees nature. They love to go check everything out and make sure that outside of their perimeter is also safe so that they can keep their livestock safe. It's very instinctual. But you're probably wondering, are these guys going to do the same thing? Because shepherds don't run off. Like Hunter doesn't like to leave slash I don't think she even would because she doesn't know where to go unless she's going to grandma's or somewhere that she's been and knows what she's going to get when she goes there. These ones will run away, but not as much as a Pyrenees. I would say 100% breeding the German into them helps so much with the running. I would say we can leave Farty out and she won't run away. The only reason she will run away is if Bentley runs away, she'll go with him. But generally she stays around her property and knows not to leave. We have a neighbor who also has an Antolian Shepherd Pyrenees Cross and that dog doesn't leave his fenced area at all, even though he could probably jump the fence if he wanted to. So the answer is it's going to depend on your dog. And again, I'm going to default to the, they just want to please you. So do train them to want to please you. Teach them what they need to do and what you want from them. Give them lots of positive when they do the right thing. This breed doesn't do well. Pyrenees in general don't do well with negative punishment or negative consequence. They do a lot better with positive reinforcement. So I'll encourage that for both Pyrenees and this breed. Just make sure you give them lots of love when they're doing what they're supposed to and set the ground rules pretty blatantly but other than that i think that i've told you everything i can about this breed they're very fun i highly highly recommend oh hi mama hi mama driven says i want a video all about me and how cool i am what the heck <laughs> all right hunter all right hunter we're gonna have a whole video about you coming soon don't you worry all right I hope you guys enjoyed this dog video. If you want more dog videos, make sure to subscribe, like this video, comment about your experience with the Shepanese or Pyrenees if you have had one or know someone who has one and have a fun story you'd like to share. I'd love to comment back and I'm sure everybody else would like to hear it as well. So when in doubt, love it out. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So what happens if you let Jack off right now? Jack will run away. <laughs> run right to your place and run off. <laughs> wow. He's a he's good boy for the most good part. Good set. Good boy, he just Jack. Wants to run off with like Benny <laughs> like we have so much area to protect and I'll put both of your guys's um hand social media handles